you might wonder what this fish is. You might view it just as a normal one or perhaps a very peculiar aquatic species. But this fish is not just what you think it is. If Poseidon is the god of the sea, this fish on your screen is the king of the aquarium. You heard it right. The discus fish, also known as the pompadour fish from the Cichlidae family, gained its title of being the king of aquarium due to its prominent, striking, and very beautiful features. Like a terrifying king with a particular trait, the discus fish is viewed by many aquarists as a frightening fish to keep due to its difficulty to take care of. But the good news is, you won't have to be stressed out and terrified to pet this fish, because for today's video, I will be spilling the ultimate guide to discus fish care, aka the king of the aquarium. Before we go on to the list of things you should consider when taking care of a discus fish, let's first dive into the brief history of the rise of a king. Originating from the Amazon River, discus fish's native home was around submerged tree roots and branches where the water was immaculate and calm, just like their natural peaceful trade. Their family background traces from the breed of Cichlidae, the largest group of freshwater fishes. Astonishingly, they differ from the other cichlids because some are aggressive and built for speed. Did you know that the first discus was identified in the early 1800s by Johann Natterer? Yes, this man on your screen was instrumental in identifying many animal species in the Amazon. His name is associated with several animals such as the Natterer's bat and between the 1970s and 80s, discus breeders began to create more colorful and vibrant combinations of discus like the powder blue discus shown in your screen. Now that you've seen a glimpse of discus fish history, you should stay tuned for our main topic. But before I go on with our next issue, hit that subscribe button below and ring the notification bell to see more of our daily updates on aquarium related topics. Now it's time to jump onto the ultimate guide for caring for the discus fish. Although discus is challenging for some of us, it's easy to follow the necessary steps to provide the best environment for them. So now let's break down the keys to success for discus fish. Let's start with the housing or tank size of a discus fish. Adult discus are large fish. They can grow up to 6 to 8 inches long and they also grow height-wise due to their dish shape. These fish are territorial to their kind, so the best tank to start a discus tank with would be a 75-gallon aquarium because it is both broader and taller. For a 75-gallon aquarium, we're looking to house 6 adult-sized discus fish. Some people will start these tanks with 10 to 12 younger discus and allow them to grow, but this tank size is not an aquarium you can easily order online. That's why I recommend the Marineland brand where you can purchase a first-time discus aquarium with a well-built and black silicone aquarium instead of a clear one. Another thing you must consider with discus fish is the tank filtration. Discus fish's natural environment has clean water, and the average home aquarium does not provide the quality water or filtration they need. But if you build a foundation of proper equipment to help keep your levels down, you won't be a slave to water changes. Discus do best with premium level equipment. A canister filter is ideal as we can stuff these with top-notch bio media like Biohome Ultimate Filter Media. For canister filters, the Owasa Biomaster is one of the best choices for planted tanks and advanced setups. Third on our list is the source water which is also a crucial aspect in keeping your discus fish healthy. As the king of the aquarium, discus fish needs very clean water. Sometimes the source water of your tap water is not going to be good enough for your discus fish because it will depend on your city's water report. That is why it's essential to get your city's water report and the readings of level in your tank to determine if a roadie unit is going to be needed. Remember that the main thing you will need to look for is high nitrates. If you have high nitrates coming out of your tap water, you may need to consider a roadie unit or RO unit that will get the job done. But if you use RO or Rhodi water, you will want to use a trace element supplement like Seachem's Discus Trace. It would help if you also noted that you could remove the DI stage to save on the resin if your TDS output is within 50 to 100. For those using tap water, it is vital to age your tap water for 24 hours and treat it with a dechlorinator like Seachem Prime. 
Temperature is the next significant factor in discus fish care success. You heard it right, the temperature is vital to consider since discus fish commonly thrive on temperatures from 85 to 86 degrees, which is a lot warmer than most tropical fish that like 78 degrees. Warmer water keeps our discus active, increases their metabolism, and tends to produce a more colorful fish. Take note that you will also want to see what temperatures the discus you wish to buy are kept at, as you may need to accumulate. In this case, it would also be wise to get an aquarium heater controller, like an inkbird, to ensure that your temperatures are accurate and fail-proof. You could also use Eheim Jagger heaters, one of the best heaters to go with. If oxygen level is essential for us, fish also need a certain oxygen level. With higher temperatures and larger fish, you will be dealing with oxygen issues in your aquarium. Also, discus fish prefer calm waters, so you cannot use a wave maker for your setup. But you may want to use a good aquarium air pump to provide oxygen to our discus tank. Since you are dealing with larger tanks with discus, a powerful air pump is in order. The Tetra Whisper AP is the ideal aquarium air pump for discus tanks. It is powerful and can handle the needs of these large fish while not making you lose your mind with their noise. Decoration is not only good for your eyes, but also good for your discus fish life. The best decor for discus will be driftwood, especially sandblast manzanita. Because this driftwood is clean and looks like a part of its natural environment, thus large sizes will show better in a large discus tank. But prepping the wood for the aquarium is a significant process we must undergo because it requires us to boil it for 10 to 15 minutes to clean the rock of decaying, dead material, and to remove tannins. To work through this, there are two approaches. One is to boil in parts that you can dip into a cooking pot. Another is to put the wood in a bathtub or outside and pour the boiling water on the wood. Just be careful when doing any of the options in boiling the driftwood. Keeping in mind the substrate will surely turn your discus fish into a good state. A discus tank with natural substrate will provide a natural aesthetic look. The problem you run into with a substrate is the weight accumulation and dealing with potential nutrient issues. The best way to work with a substrate is to use it for aesthetic purposes only. You want no more than a half inch for our substrate and this will limit our ability to use rooted aquarium plants. But we will see later that conventional plants are not the best for discus tanks. The most accessible substrate to maintain for a discus tank is sand. But again, we only want a half inch of substrate. This substrate is also pH neutral, something we will desire as most discus for keeping purposes will need acidic water to be neutral. Next on our list is the diet of your discus fish, which is crucial for their maintenance. Discus fish are demanding when it comes to diet as they need a varied and balanced diet to keep their immune systems and colors healthy. Discus also requires being fed multiple times a day. They also have small mouths for their size and are slow eaters. That's why more miniature food is better, like blood worms, black worms, and vibrobites. For feeding worm food like black worms, a feeding cone can help keep the food in the place. Discus fish are slow eaters, so this keeps the food in one place so your discus can eat while keeping your tank clean. Last but one of the most important things to consider is the discus fish tank mates. Finding tank mates for a discus fish tank can be quite the challenge. Because we're going to keep our discus in hotter waters, this is going to be hard on many tropical fish. Also, discus are slow feeders, so that an aggressive feeder will outcompete and stress our discus. We think about good tank mates, Cardinal Tetris and Chorus come to mind. It is doable, but I recommend making your discus the centerpiece of your aquarium. Start with a dominant discus tank first, then consider adding tank mates if you want to. In terms of choosing a plant, we'll want live plants that can not only tolerate the higher temperatures of our discus tank, but also still grow in a low nutrient environment. We also wish to plant plants that can tolerate a non-CO2 injected environment to ensure we have a rich amount of oxygen available at higher temperatures. Some of which I can recommend is Anuvis java fern, shallow root plants like Bacopa caroliniana, microswords, and Vallisneria. If you're a book reader and a fish keeper, you can try reading the discus book written by Alistair Agutter. 
which consists of a comprehensive guide on every aspect of discus fish care. You can also visit our website at AquariumStoreDepot.com to learn more about the proper quarantine of the discus fish, facts about its breeding, its types, and other blog posts regarding the available tank mates you can pair your discus fish with. This king of the aquarium might sound a little too challenging to take care of, primarily due to its demanding needs, but a beginner can learn every step to keep these beautiful yet challenging fish. If you find this video helpful, give us a thumbs up and leave a comment below. You can also raise questions and other concerns about this fish, and we'll try to reach out. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you around on our next video.